My name is Reverend Jay Rambo. I'm co-interim pastor here at Chesterfield Baptist Church uh, with Vern Matson. Uh, the two of us are working together, and I'll be doing the opening part of our church service, and Reverend Matson will be doing the, the second part uh, of our, our service. I want to uh, welcome all of you to our, our church service. For those uh, who are visiting, we extend a very special warm welcome to you, and Pray you will not feel like a stranger, but as God's guest, and be able to listen to the music and, and the scripture, and that God might speak to your heart. And for regular members, it's always good to see you and have you here. And again, uh, may each of us uh, feel God's presence with us. The call to worship is found in Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow, follow the righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth, and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are my joy and my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decree to the very end. Let's, let us now sing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
I ask now that you would uh, bow with me in our prayer of invocation, followed by the Lord's Prayer using debt and debtors. Let us pray. Eternal God, without your presence, there is no real church. You have to be here to be a part of us. You are the focal point of our coming to church today. So Lord, we invoke your presence with us. We thank you that you provide for our needs. We thank you that you can be at the same time all over the world for you are God and nothing is impossible for you. Lord, we welcome you into your house, a house of prayer, a house of safety. And Lord, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to be upon us, lift us up, and we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house. And Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and they do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so does my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow juniper and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the, for the Lord renowned, for our everlasting sign that will endure forever. And now we're uh, happy to have the uh, choir sing Walk Worthy.
Please join me now in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us as individuals, as a family, as a church, as a nation. And we come to thank you and worship who you are, the creator and giver of life. Lord, you have created this wonderful day. We thank you for the health that we have and that you would continue to bless us in good health. Lord, there are many who do not have that health. And we pray that uh, you would reach out your healing hand and touch them. For some who may be in the hospital, and it could be a scary experience, that you would hold their hand and be with them during that time in the hospital. Lord, for those who have uh, ailments that perhaps uh, heart trouble or problems with the, uh, the legs or with the eyes or ears that we have to put up with uh, day by day, give each of us the strength to carry on. May we turn to you for, for the goodness to walk day by day, moment by moment, knowing that you are beside us and will provide for us. Lord, we pray uh, for a slowdown in, of the, the virus and that someday in the near future it may, may disappear or they may find some type of antidote to, uh, to get rid of it. It's, uh, it's very difficult on most all of us. And it's a different type of world, a different type of living. Help us to be patient, uh, not to, to go into areas where we shouldn't, where we could get that virus. We pray uh, for doctors and nurses and the aides, uh, police, firefighters, uh, medics, uh, first responders. All these people put their life on the line uh, to make life better. So we pray for them that you would keep them safe. Lord, we, we pray for those who have ailments that you might, as a great physician, touch them and heal them. Lord, we pray for those who mourn a loss of a loved one, that you would give them your comfort and your peace, the peace of God, which goes a long way and can be with us forever as long as we continue to seek you. Lord, we pray for a broken world. Uh, in the last few weeks, uh, there's been hostilities between blacks and whites in different parts of the country. And Lord, we pray that you would give us wise heads to uh, not attack people and hurt people, but rather we would pray for people and love people. And we, we pray that you'd bring us back together as a nation Lord, we pray for our government. We pray for our president and Congress. Pray that you would help them to work together, that we would be a nation under God. And Lord, we have a lot to be thankful for. For those of us who know Jesus Christ, we have the gift of eternal life that lies ahead. We thank you for love and peace, joy, hope, salvation. These are things that we can't make on our own. They are gifts from you. So we thank you for the difficult times that we go through that oftentimes drive us closer to you. We thank you for the good times that lift our spirits. And Lord, may we be your servants. May we love you and love one another. The greatest commandment. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to be here this morning, and today we're going to look at passage of Scripture from Matthew, the 13th chapter. Uh, we'll read verses 1 through 9, and then 18 through uh, 23 from the New International Version. That same day, Jesus went out uh, of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, 
while the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered the seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprung up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no roots. Other seeds fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred and sixty and thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Now we turn to verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When troubles and persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed that falls on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produced a crop, yielding a hundred Sixty and thirty times what was sown. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of this parable. And may we absorb what it is saying to us. We come now to a hymn of preparation. And in this this day and in this time, we need to truly lean on the everlasting arms. God is ready and willing for us to be comforted by his presence. Let's hear these words as we sing together.
my sermon title for today is, What Standards Do You Live By? Certainly it is wonderful to be here uh, with the fine folks of uh, Chesterfield Baptist Church. I am grateful for each one of our members and friends who are attending virtually uh, a service in this time of the pandemic. I also appreciate the efforts of those who are making this possible and continue to help support the ministry not only here at home but worldwide. If you are new to our broadcast, we, we certainly, Jay and I, welcome you and we pray that God will touch your life in a special way. Our doors are open, <laughs> well, figuratively. We do come each day, one of us, to be here to answer and respond to the needs of our community. We hope that you will be blessed and that you will find God's presence in your life and in your family and make, maybe make this your church home. Today we are looking at uh, Matthew's account of what's become known as the parable of the sower. As you know, the scripture we read that Jesus was always teaching through the use of parables. These stories were easy to remember, were able to be recalled by the disciples later on after Christ's resurrection and ascension into heaven, and the Holy Spirit assisted the gospel writers to include them in their text. So generation after generation have learned from them and can now apply them to their lives. The parable is really one of the longest parables that come down through the ages to us. It is among Matthew's records as he shared it with the early New Testament church and used it for teaching those who had come to accept Christ into their life, to come into the faith of believing that God's Son came for them. Here we have the words of Jesus and just as important his instructions there in beginning with verse 18 that applied to his day, but it also, I believe, applies to us as well. Matthew, in between that, in the 13th verse, says that with the disciples he had chosen, that we were there on a, they, they were on a daily venue or in a daily uh, walk with Christ, that all parables contained living out or lived out experiences. Experiences that persons can relate to. This one in particular draws close to me. I, I hope you can picture that word picture that Jesus gave. When Corinne and I came to New Jersey, we shared uh, in starting a new garden in our yard. Uh, this, of course, is something that we have done wherever we lived. You know, it helps us supply and supplement our income. But more than that, it provides fresh vegetables and garden crops and we would can some of them and we'd put some in the freezer so in the middle of the winter when you don't have a, a crop growing, you can be nourished and you can enjoy what happened through the summer. One thing we noticed right away that the soil in New Jersey, at least where we live, was vastly different than Nebraska and Kansas. You, you take a shovel of dirt and it's either clay or sand, or at least mostly. The rich black loam is hard to come by here. Back home, you could dig two, three, maybe even six feet down before you hit the hard pan, as we called it, the clay and the sand. Of course, that's not true everywhere, especially in the sand hills and in the grasslands, the great American desert, as they called it, or prairie. But that seems to me to be the exception and not the rule, at least in Nebraska. Now you get to know a little bit about 
myself and my wife and our roots. I also came to realize that there's a vast difference here in New Jersey from northern New Jersey to southern New Jersey. Here you find all the different types of soil or lack thereof throughout the state. Still, it is known as the garden state. So all of us should be able, what? To relate to the parables that Jesus is giving here. It should come to our mind quickly. When I go up north and I go to Camp Lebanon, our camp, and I see the cathedral, the beautiful cathedral that is hewn out of solid rock and a wall of solid rock that the previous owner had dug out to make fence lines and beautify the area. I also see many plowed fields up there that have huge stones that they've dug out so they could plow the field and they lay them along the roadway. You begin to know that that's a different kind of soil, a different kind of lifestyle. So when I go to southern New Jersey, you see, well, you see tomatoes and you see vegetables and you see the, the stands along the roadway. It, it, you see expanded space which really brought me feeling like I was back home. And the soil is said to be much more richer and more produce, productive. There, there are those things that they call nurseries. Now, not, they're not growing children, <laughs> although there are a lot of children out there. You know, the, the apple orchards and the peach orchards and the, the evergreens of all types and all sizes. You, you see those and, and you absorb the differences that are there. You see the cranberry bogs in between north and south and uh, there in the, the wetlands of the pine barrens. Oh, I'm not telling you anything new. These are things that you should know because you live here in New Jersey. My point is that we can truly relate to this parable. That's the point. For New Jersey has all of the various varieties of soil across the state, just as it was true in Israel. But was Jesus really talking about New Jersey variety of soil and crops? Yes. If that's what holds your focus, yes, if that is what relates you to the images that he painted with words and text from that boat, yes, if that is saying, I understand completely what Jesus taught. But even Jesus said, there are those who can hear everything I have said, but yet they do not hear. Whoever has ears, let him hear, let him understand. For most of my life, I have suffered from tone deafness. I also have suffered from a hearing loss. Now, I describe it as a 60-40 ailment. I have 60% of hearing in one ear and 40% in the other. So I have 100%. <laughs> Not really, but that becomes the combination of how one hears today, how I hear. And sometimes it was a challenge, especially it's becoming a challenge as I've gotten older. So when I read these words of Jesus, whoever has ears, let them hear. I am drawn to pay more attention maybe even more than some, are you hearing me? Are you hearing what Jesus had to say? Well, my friends, I hope so. I now have a set of hearing aids and I have discovered that at home there are more noises than I ever heard before. 
the question is, who controls your TV controller? Who's in charge of the sound? You see, now with my hearing aids, I hear the fan in the bathroom, which I never heard before from the living room. Hmm. Now that's not unusual. There's squeaks in the floor that I never knew were there. Now, Corinne tells me they were always that way. She walks across the floor and it makes a noise. You can tell where she is. You can tell where the cat is. The volume on the TV now can be lower. Yes. That is until the air conditioning turns on and the motor from the air conditioning is heard as it sucks the air into the return and I can't hear the TV anymore. Being able to hear better makes me question this passage of scripture even more. I, I have been missing out. What is it that I have bypassed what is it that has interrupted this parable in a way that I need to again begin to look at it and find its meaning? What do these seeds of truth have to do with, with my life? What, what do these seeds of truth have to do with your life? It led me to ask the question, by what standards do you live by? Are they what God wants you to live in your life? Have you missed them altogether? Have you heard? Have you responded? Is there still time to adjust? Jesus said in Matthew 13, 17, my prophets and righteous people long to see what you are seeing. He was speaking to the disciples, but did not see it. To hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So listen, my friends. Hear the meaning. Take actions on what you are receiving today in your life. It will become the way you can live for the rest of your days. It is not too late, but you must listen. You must hear. You may need to change course. You may be at a pivotal moment in your life. Don't bypass this opportunity. If you're not listening, if you're not hearing the message of God's eternal kingdom is for you, but if you miss it, understand it or not, understand that this may be your opportunity to receive God's grace. You, of all people, must be very, very careful, very cautious. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus is saying that three-fourths of these examples lead you to nowhere. If you don't think this is for you, about you, directed to the path you are on now, take notice. Evil, sin, Denial are all roadblocks. They stop us in doing what God wants us to do. We come to the end of the road. There's no outlet. Maybe it's heavy traffic. Uh, you're too busy. The last exit is just around the corner. And once you pass by, once you go beyond the point of no return, you may not be able to turn around, to change direction, to get on course where God wants you to be, wants me to be, wants all of us to be. Jesus said the glory will be snatched away. Perhaps that is not 
your situation at all. Great, if that's the situation. But please understand, please understand that Jesus and what Jesus is saying counts. Maybe you have heard, you know the joy, the songs are ringing in your ears, the sounds are clear and good. That's good for you. But you know, if I don't plug in my hearing aids every night and let them recharge, those rechargeable batteries the next morning will be what? They'll be dead. And it will be silence. When you turn on your hearing aids, you hear two or three chirps, or you hear a tune, so you know that it's on. But if it's not charged up, my friends, just understand. If we're not charged up with the word of God, if we're not listening to the word of God, we're not ready to face the day. We go out only hearing half what we should. Like the seed that is sprouted along the pathway. They quickly fade in the heat of the day, and so do we. You don't see what is in front of you. Be careful, Jesus is saying, you are apt to fade and wither away. The pressures of the world, the issues of our time may become too much, and you have witnessed it, haven't you? You've seen it in our day where people are crushed by the world in which we live. Now that you know, now that you are aware, move where you can be replanted before it's too late. The other day, I drove by a, a sod farm. And I saw the sod farmer along there with his equipment cutting, undercutting so that he could roll up the grass and I know that it'll go to the market. And I, I know it'll be sold. And then what happens? It'll be replanted. And it'll become a, a yard that is beautiful. And sometimes that image sticks in my mind as I read this particular parable. And I see it. Because we need to sometimes be dug up out of where we are and replanted in the vineyards of God. I pray that you will be so lucky. You may have the joy of the morning that will last all day long. The psalmist spoke of that. Jesus says to his disciples, to those who followed him, don't find yourself growing in the thorn patch. Hmm, where's the thorn patch? Well, one, uh, one experience I had, it was a most traumatic one that I was, ri I was riding on a pony, a, a small pony out there in the middle of the prairie. Now, that pony had a bad habit. When he heard the squeaking sound of the door on the granary opening, he would make a beeline wherever he was because he knew there was food inside that he loved. Well, lo and behold, he heard, he heard the squeaking sound of the granary door open. A quarter mile away, we were on top of a, a long hill, and I, he heard that familiar sound like a shotgun blast. <laughs> he took off down the hill at top speed. Now, I was young, but I was trying to hold on because he took off so fast. Unexpectedly, I was leaning back in the saddle on that steep hill and slope, and my feet was out of the stirrups, which probably could have protected me. At least I could have stayed in the saddle. But it came time that I knew that holding on to the reins wasn't enough. And I needed to bail out. So I did. Wrong. Wrong move. Happens to some of us in life. 
I landed right smack dab in a cactus patch. I landed on my back and then flipped forward and I hit face first into an unforgiving, unrelenting, blooming patch of cacti, as they call it. Don't find yourself planted with the thorns. They stick to you. <laughs> and they stick to you for a long time. I always remember that. I can't wipe it out of my memory. Jesus said, worries of this life are cactus patches that will take you down if you're not careful how you're living. Deceitfulness of wealth can choke you. So much so that you will cry out for help. I hear those words today. I cannot breathe. Cactus patches. You may, you may become unfruitful, Jesus says, if you're planted in the thorns. Where have you, my friends, planted yourself? In your journey of life, what standards are you living by? Is it God's ways? Is it God's instructions? Is it God's teaching? Is it God's understanding? Are you planted in the good soil? Are you seeing God's grace and mercy and love? Are you seeing your life transformed by the power of God? Are you hearing the word? Are you in God's presence, learning his words, growing and building up your life? Are you planted in a community of faith where there are others who understand the word and share the word of God in their life? Are you where God wants you to be? Or are you on your own, alone? You know, Jesus says there is a harvest that will come. He says it will be a bountiful harvest of a hundred, of sixty, of thirty times more than what you ever planted if you come with me, if you follow me. You know the blessings. I have no idea how the disciples responded to these words when they first heard it. I do know, though, that they stuck with Jesus through the good and through the challenges of life. They stood underneath, underneath the cross of Jesus. They were there in that resurrection morning too. They went to mourn and they celebrated a new life. They were in that upper room and Jesus came to them and visited them. They were there at his ascension into heaven. They celebrated what God was doing and what God is doing now. They stuck with it and were blessed. But it is not about them as much, my friends, as it is about you. They left these words. Matthew left these words of Jesus so that you could choose the soil that you will be planted in. If you need help to decide, Chesterfield Baptist Church is here for you. We can share what God is doing in our lives. No, we're not all perfect and we're none of us really perfect. But we know that we're planted in good soil, God's soil, God's garden. God's love can be found. His grace and his assurance. We know it's possible because we have experienced it and are experiencing it even in this day and time. It's holy ground. It's good ground. It produces fruit. 
You can decide where you need to be. God gave you that choice. Where will it be? Will you be standing in silence? Or will you hear his word? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, these words come to me again. 160, 30 times more if we're standing with thee, if we're in your presence, if we're planted deep in your word. So today, Lord, I, I pray that each who hear this message, that they may find a way to be, if necessary, replanted, transplanted, dug up and replanted into the soil that is yours. Good, fertile, loam, productive soil. In your word, in your message of hope, in your grace, in that which will renew them and make them fruitful. I pray that they may make that choice today. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who spoke there from the boat, so we hear it again. May we have ears to hear and respond accordingly. In thy name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is a beautiful chorus, really, two verses only. Oh, how he loves you and me. Let's hear these words. Let's sing these words. Let's reflect on them. Because God wants you in his garden. God bless. Let's hear these words. Let us close now uh, for our benediction. Let's bow our heads and come with God's holy presence in our midst. Lord, you've been with us. You've gathered here in the variety of homes and settings that this will be heard, this message. And I pray, Lord, that each soul will receive it and hear it and respond to it according to your will a will that is given to us the opportunity to choose rather than to be forced to make a decision for you. Now, Lord, go with us that our pathway may be straight, 
Our vision may be clear. Our hearing may be open. And that we may go forth to glorify your name in all we do and say. And that our standards will be yours all the days of our life. In the name of Christ, we gather and we go from here to the world in which we live. Amen and amen. Thank you.